Molly, welcome to the Sunday Politics Garden. The Greens want zero carbon emissions by 2030. Wouldn't that require the sort of sacrifice normally seen in wartime? I don't think it's about sacrifice, but I think it is about transformation of the way we live. So Sky did a really interesting poll which showed that 60% of people actually agreed with the really ambitious demands being made by Extinction Rebellion. And we are the party that's prepared to implement those sort of changes. So it's things like frequent flyer levy, really importantly insulating people's homes, which of course isn't a sacrifice at all. It means we won't have old people dying of cold in the winter, but free insulation and also transforming the way our economy works. But just works. 11 years to zero emissions. So that's what the IPCC said. That's what the science tells us. It's not green the saying we'd like to do this. The science also says it's not possible. Well, it says it's... No, it does say it's possible to do that within 12 years, to keep within 1.5 degrees. Not without the carbon capture, which that's we right. haven't got. So the carbon capture means changing the way we farm, because if we had organic farming and carbon-rich soils, we could be capturing the carbon back. So we have to be ambitious. We have to aim for what the science tells us we need to do. It's a question of survival now. You're standing again as a Green candidate. You didn't expect to because it was all supposed to finish uh, a couple of months ago. Why do Greens support Europe? Why do you want to be governed by a big supranational state effectively when you want everything else to be local? Well, we believe in subsidiarity, so exercising power at the appropriate level. And lots of the work I've done, if you think about my work on tax avoidance, you simply couldn't do that at the national level. And the same is true of climate change. So we think when issues have to be done at a higher level, then it's important that we're involved in those decisions. And that's why we think we should stay in the EU. But 700 MEPs all flying into Brussels. Then once a month they get into the train or the car and drive down to Strasbourg. That's not very green, is it? Well, you know, I haven't flown at all. I know Brussels. you haven't, so, but most but, people But haven't. we need to change the behaviour of MEPs and that's one of the things climate rebellion is, is, hope, you know, is intending to do so people are a lot more conscious about their emissions. But look, politics and democracy does require spending and it does require people to move around to be together but we still need those structures there because we need to make the decisions to make the world a better place and a lot of those decisions cannot just be made at national level. UKIP won in the South West the Euro elections last time. Why won't you be in the same studio now as their spokesperson? UKIP now is not the same party it was then. It was already engaged in racist and dog whistle politics then, but it's got so much worse under Gerard Batten's leadership. I represent lots of people in ethnic minority communities who are afraid of the sort of hate speech we're hearing from UKIP, and I'm refusing to legitimise their behaviour by sharing a platform with them. But don't you win by sharing ideas and thoughts? It depends whether the people you're debating with are actually interested in a tolerant and open society and in a functional democracy. And the, the way UKIP work now, they're definitely not. They're a part of the far right that's a threat to our democracy. And I don't think somebody like Carl Benjamin should be allowed to stand in these elections. I think the Electoral Commission needs to have more power. Undisclosed bankrupt, undischarged bankrupt could not stand. Somebody who's trying to encourage threats of rape against an MP can stand. There's something very wrong there. Do you think anyone who votes for UKIP then is a racist or a fascist? I really don't know who their voters are. I think the more moderate, let's say, uh, supporters of Brexit have shifted to the Brexit party now. And I think that what UKIP is doing is deliberately encouraging fascism for their own reasons and spreading division. And that's causing a lot of fear to women and to other communities that I represent. And it's my job to defend them and stand in solidarity with so them. So is it OK, in your view, to vote Brexit for the Brexit party? Well, the Brexit Party is standing for something. I mean, I, I don't like the Brexit Party and I abhor the way they communicate and what they're trying to achieve. But I think if people, if it says Brexit, people want Brexit, then, you know, in a democracy, that's, that's what they'll do. And a lot of people will vote for them. Do you expect that they will win these uh, local elections or these European elections, I should say, here in the South West? I think because they have one simple word there, I think they will get more votes than any other party a lot of Conservatives will vote for them. So I don't think they will increase their share of the vote, but I think they will get more votes than any other party. And should they do that, will you then accept that that is actually the will of the people? Not at all, because they will get about a third of the vote, and a third of the vote will go to Remain parties, and a third of the vote will go somewhere in the middle. And that's more or less how the country is divided now. And this is why I think we need a people's vote, because actually 60% of people now support staying in the EU. And if we had do a they? people's vote... Well, that's what the latest polling shows. It's been a, a majority for Remain for about a year now. So if we had that choice, OK, there'd be some strong Brexit. And the polling I've seen says that there, lots of people haven't changed their minds. A lot of people haven't changed their minds, and some people have become more strongly Brexit. And I've probably become more strongly Remain but it's the people in the middle that will make the majority and they are becoming disillusioned because they see it's much more complicated and they're not going to get everything they were promised in 2016. So to, to end this kind of mess that we're in, we need to have that second vote. Now we know what Brexit really means. Molly Scott-Cato, thank you.